Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Kiana Holloman and Dora Trillo. How y'all doing, ladies? Hey, Chief. Hi, Chief. Hi Kiana. Y'all excited? Yeah. We are. <laughs> yeah, super stoked. Listen, I'm super excited because I get the chance to have an awesome guest uh, today and talk about my favorite topic, food. I, you know, I love to eat, and so this this is right up my alley. So, so Dora, please introduce today's guest. Of course, thank you, Chief. Today's guest is a New York Times best-selling author, entrepreneur, chef, and award-winning talk show host. She's the daughter of America's doctor, Dr. Mehmet Oz, and she's here today to talk. I'm sorry to share her favorite cooking hacks and to discuss her new show, The Good Dish, and her role on this season's Master Chef Junior. Please give a warm Chief Chat welcome to Daphne Oz. Hey. Hi, guys. <laughs> How are you? Oh, doing good. How you doing? Good. I hear we're, we're talking delicious food. We're talking taking good care of ourselves, all kinds of good stuff. <laughs> well, well, I don't know if I was talking good care of myself, but I know you're going you're gonna to help me out on that arena, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You look like you're doing a good job. All everybody there looks very healthy. <laughs> I like to see it. <laughs> awesome. awesome. Well, welcome to the show, Daphne. And uh, can you let our viewers know where you where you're calling in from today? I am calling in from my house. I'm here in Florida. It's a beautiful, like 80 degree day. No complaints. It's it's a good. Here, my living room. It's like momentarily silent because my four kids are at school and I my puppy is in the kitchen. He apparently doesn't know I'm here. Otherwise, you might hear him start yapping at me. But other than that, we're good. Awesome. <laughs> so, Daphne, you've teamed up with co-hosts Gail Simmons and Jamika Pessoa to bring delicious chef endorsed recipes to your audience daily on The Good Dish. So when did you first come up with the concept for the show? So the Good Dish actually began as weekly segments on my dad's show, the Dr. Oz show, years ago. And we were, you know, we just wanted to create good, delicious food content, help people make some yummy meals at home um, that they could feel confident making and also enjoy themselves eating. And it was so well received that we actually started the process of turning it into a full one hour show. This was almost three years ago at this point. Shopped it around pandemic hits, as you can imagine, it put a lot of creative uh, projects on hold. And we were very lucky to get to through that time period, continue to make segments digitally and virtually, uh, you know, all of us streaming in from our various homes onto the show, um, which was a really powerful way. Actually, I think in, in a strange way, it gave even more legs to the show because people were watching us cook in our home kitchens. And it was this really intimate and fun environment in that way. Um, and, and, you know, amazing technology allowing us and supporting us to do that. And um, the conversations continued, and ultimately we were able to create this beautiful, uh, you know, full concept of what we've been trying to do um, with this one-hour show, The Good Dish, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's good food. It's good times with good friends. It is really meant to be um, a bright spot in people's day on TV. I think, you know, you turn into television, and especially talk shows, to hang out with people regularly. They become like friends, like family. You invite them into your home every day. And our goal is really to have it be this relaxing point where you're still learning something. You're going to get every single day we answer the question, what's for dinner tonight? Because it's something that stresses everybody out across this country, you know, getting home from a long day's work and you got to figure out what to put on the table. So we make sure we give you that answer and a great, delicious recipe your family will love. But we also use food to do what it's always done, which is connect people, bring us to the table, give us something to nourish ourselves with. And then it opens the conversation in this really wonderful just way that it's it's so humanizing. I mean, even we have big celebrity guests on the show, people you've known and love for years, you get to see such a different side of them when they're in the kitchen. It is so humanizing. It is so personal. And everybody has that you know favorite dish or the thing they won't eat or the thing they remember from childhood that their mom couldn't make or their dad didn't know how to do. And and we get to sort of play in a, in a really uplifting and positive and fun way that I think people have responded to so well. Yes, that is so cool because a lot of us have actually 
been cooking more after or since the pandemic. We're at home and we're watching you and, and learning how to cook. Um, so we've definitely enjoyed watching watching your show. From meatless dinners for Lent to how to's on making over leftovers, um, the show has tips for everyone. I'll tell you my favorite leftover recipe is that kitchen sink chicken salad. We do that all oh, the time. Oh, yay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a must it's have. <laughs> easy. So I know this is a tough one, but what has been your favorite tip uh, featured on the show for everyday chefs? Oh, my favorite. No, that's hard. That is, ooh, that's like, what? <laughs> um, <laughs> for everyday chefs, you know what? I think, um, oh, so we had a recipe. We had Chef Josh Capon on the show a couple months ago. And one of the things that he, he, he came on to show you how to get restaurant quality steak at home. And it has what been one of the segments that totally blew up for us because everybody wants that. They want that impact, right? You're going to go out and you're going to buy this gorgeous steak. You're going to spend the money on it, but you want to really have that restaurant quality experience at home. And the thing that he, the best couple tips that he was sharing, number one, you got to salt your meat, both sides, all on, on all sides, obviously heavy salting. And I'll tell you, it's kind of controversial, but I'll tell you that I do not pepper my steak before I cook it because I find that pepper, unlike salt, is a seasoning of, of you know, that, that spice. Um, and it burns when you cook it on high heat, which is his next tip. His next tip is to, so you can pepper it afterwards, but just don't pepper it before you grill it or sear it in our case. So he gets a cast iron skillet smoking hot with a little bit of fat in there. You can put a little olive oil to begin with. Sear, like a hard sear your steak on one side wait until it's ready to release flip it and actually one of the things you can do is continually and you're you know not supposed to people have heard a lot about how you don't want to mess with your meat and that's absolutely true until the crust forms you really don't want to mess with it too much but once it has formed and it comes off the surface of the pan easily then you can flip it a couple of times just to get that gorgeous even cook and then depending on how well done you like it done you can actually finish uh-oh uh-oh I think she got oh, kicked looks, off. Yeah, it looks like she and got also, kicked off. I was watering too much over that steak talk. <laughs> I, know, no, I, was, I was like, hold on, salt, pepper. I was at the edge so, of my seat. Like, what, what's I, next? <laughs> yeah, and so yeah. for me, and so I'm glad she she kind of mentioned, I, that kind of took me back to a story uh, of me trying to cook a steak. and Because I wasn't used to the finer things in life uh, growing up, right? And so... I, I don't remember if my stove had a, a fan over the top of it, right? So, so even mm -hmm. here recently, uh, you know, I just got a house a couple of years ago. I've been kind of, I don't cook steaks in the house that much. I normally do it in, on the grill, and so um, I, I I got a cast iron skillet. I did the whole nine with the steak, but I didn't turn the fan on. And man, you know how long that that smoke stays in the house? Do you do you realize <laughs> how long your house smells Sorry. like smoke? When, oh, when you, you gotta stop. open the windows. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very yeah. Well. I had to open well, I had I got kicked out of the house apparently. Uh so <laughs> so I was outside. <laughs> That's but, funny. But wow. I think I did put pepper on on the I I had salt and pepper on the steak. So Yeah, man. I'm guilty of that. I do that on oh please she's back. But yeah, I, I do that and it's used she, to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? Something cool that we haven't gotten to talk about just yet is that today um, the exchange is honoring Vietnam veterans um, at our um, store locations, installations worldwide. So shout out yes, to all the yes, Vietnam yes. vets out there. Yes. Happy. What else? Hold on. Let me see. Let me let me do that again. Hold on. Let me say happy Vietnam War Veterans Day to all the, the Vietnam War veterans, because we understand that, uh, you know, when they when they came back from from that war specifically, uh, they weren't greeted like they should have been. And so uh, I'm glad to see that that the exchange is kind of, you know, full on press, uh, you know, fully committed to, to saying thank you to those those men and women uh, that that endured during that, that unique time in our history. So uh, we definitely, yeah. definitely appreciate them. And, and uh, if you go into it anywhere, any base near you, uh, the exchange is probably having a, a ceremony today. So please support that. And thank a Vietnam veteran if you if you get a chance to. We love our veterans. Agreed. Yeah. I think we got Daphne Daphne coming back. Am I back on? I'm. I, what the heck happened there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, sorry, so, guys. Uh, no. So one of our one of our 
things that that happens uh sometimes during our show is if if we we if somebody clicks on the same link that you have to access the show it kicks you off and brings them on so somebody from your team is probably we saw somebody from your team uh that <laughs> Wonderful look, oh, wonderful God. young lady, wonderful young lady though. So it's, she came in and. <laughs> oh wow! Well, you know, you could have had a totally different talk. That would have been nice. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I thought it was my internet, so I've changed locations trying to find. No, 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 it, was, it wasn't. Oh. No, we we, we have this issue sometimes with with some of our guests because the the team wants to come in and, and view it from from their end just to make sure yes. everything goes well, and so they use the link. That that we send you, and that link is specifically for you. So that that's uh. Got it. Got yeah, it. Yep. Yeah, okay. But we got it. We're Thank you. <laughs> we're we're back on the on the steak with no pepper, right? Until afterwards. <laughs> oh, I lost you. I, I was talking to myself. Oh my gosh, I gave you the whole. And yes, like, we were. <laughs> but the thing is, is we were we were all like drooling the whole time you were talking about it, and then all of a sudden you you cut out, and I'm just like. Let's finish the steak story. <laughs> and the secret of steak stays with me. <laughs> you look like, um, so, so I don't just uh, the quick recap was just uh, he just shared a couple really great tips for making steak and nailing it every time at home. And and aside from the not peppering it before you cook it, which is my own thing, it's not necessarily accepted wisdom, um, but I do find it tastes better if you just pepper it right before you serve it. Um, you got to let it come out of the fridge for like at least 20 minutes before you cook it because you never want to cook meat with a straight chill on it. it. It just makes it less predictable to cook it evenly into your desired temp. Then you want to get a searing hot cast iron skillet or grill if you're going outside. A little fat in there. You can use olive oil. Some people use lard. Some people use a little butter. But olive oil or, or a neutral oil is kind of nice because it has, um, it, you know, just it can get really nice and hot. Throw your steak in there. You don't need a lot. Obviously, the steak has plenty of fat if it's, you know, the kind of steak that I like to eat. So we um, you just sear it hard on one side, flip it when it's ready to come off. You don't want to be in there fighting with your steak unnecessarily. Flip it, let it sear on the other side. And then you can actually, once that crust is formed, that gorgeous golden brown crumb, like perfect fatty crust is formed, you can flip it a couple times um, gently just to continue that perfect even cook. If you want it more done, uh, you put it in the oven then to finish it so it stays really nice and juicy. But the number one chef trick to nailing the steak at home is throwing a pat of butter into that hot pan and uh, some fresh herbs like rosemary or uh, thyme is gorgeous, an, a garlic clove or two, and then just be basting that steak with that melted butter, mm -hmm. the finishing touch while it's cooking. Mm -hmm. ah, let it rest mm -hmm. 10 minutes before you cut into it and ooh, per perfect mm -hmm. steak. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're oh, having church up in here today. I feel like church going on. <laughs> Man. So yeah. And also another tip is uh when you when you got when you uh kind of dropped off Daphne, I, I told a embarrassing steak story uh to our audience. Oh, uh, my favorite. <laughs> so but the thing is is another thing that I tell the audience is make sure you turn on the, the, the fan above the stove before you cook the steak because I, I, I did not do that. And and oh no, you, you yeah, you'd be surprised how long uh, smoke stays in the house uh, after cooking a, a, a steak on a, on a cast iron. <laughs> oh, I'm surprised you didn't get a visit from the uh, from the fire department. I've done that a few times, had the whole situation go off. <laughs> well, well, I got I got kicked out the house, and then uh, I got a blanket on the on the sofa. So that's 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 that's, that's just as bad as. That's just as bad as getting the fire department involved. So <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Well, you learned the your steak lesson. Turned out great, the though. Pan on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes, I was gonna say, I bet it did. It had a nice char grill on there. Yeah, it did. It did. So, so beyond the good dish, you have a huge social media following. And Kiana was saying how she's 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 one of your she likes everything on your page. So you gotta look out for Kiana liking everything that she <laughs> posts. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, oh. But we love to see uh, your snapshots of, of your kiddos and, and special family moments. Uh, fans also get a chance to peek at the, the dishes that you uh, enjoy both at home and while you're traveling. So what's your favorite dish to cook for your family? My favorite dish to cook for my family. I mean, we, you know, we, we have my mom's side of the family is part Italian. So we love a big Italian feast. I have to say my grandma's eggless Caesar salad, which I've made and Keanu, you probably have seen it there. Um, it is one of my all time favorite, perfect, like, big serving salad to whip up for the family. And then we'll do, you know, our family's red sauce and pasta. Um, that's just so simple. Everyone loves it. Maybe we'll do some grilled shrimp on the side or a nice piece of fish or something, but that's that's like a 
simple and, and beautiful and super flavorful celebratory family meal. I love it. Um, roasting a whole chicken, guys, that was the number one thing when I learned how to make it and make it the way my family loves it. Like that is the thing that gave me the most confidence in the kitchen because there is something so First of all, it smells fabulous. There's so much you can do with it. You mentioned that you like, Dora, that you mentioned you like the the kitchen sink chicken salad. And part of the reason yes. I came up with that recipe, which is literally just like dump all the, you know, veggies and the condiments and the, and the you know, some chopped up apple and delicious combinations into a bowl with your leftover chicken. It, it happened because we roast so many chickens. Um, and, uh, and I have to say, I think that being creative about, the, you know, enjoying a meal the first way it's made like, you know, like a, a gorgeous roast chicken or a piece of, you know, beautiful roast fish or something like this. But then in your mind, being able to see all the different ways it can be recreated into gorgeous leftovers that are like equally exciting and tantalizing and delicious to jump into and don't remind you that you're repurposing a meal, but instead that you're enjoying a whole new thing for having, you have one time the effort for two times the enjoyable moments of meal eating. Um, that to me is a big, a, a big win in the kitchen. So Daphne, the exchange promotes health and wellness for warfighters through our Be Fit initiative, and you're also a major advocate for healthy eating. So what are a few recipes that military families should have on hand in their own kitchens? Yes, I, this is a amazing question because I think that, um, you know, when you're busy and you've got kids running around, you've got a job, you've got, you know, everything that you're managing on your plate, healthy eating is something that I think you're that much more likely to follow through on if you've given yourself the head start of having a plan. Um, and it's it's that level of organization that doesn't always come naturally to me, but that I've really put in place because I see how beneficial it is in my life and how much more likely I am to make healthy meals. So that's things like, um, you know, making sure my pantry is stocked with basic dry goods that I find really valuable to have on hand. So, uh, you know, chickpea or lentil flour, pasta, uh, beans in, in my cans, um, different kinds of grains, brown rice, quinoa, things like that. Um, and then lots of quality condiments. I have them on hand always because, look, I'm not I'm not shy to say that I think you know harnessing someone's delicious sauce that they've put time and you know like like a Thai chili paste for instance. It's going to take you an hour to put together the herbs and spices for that, and it might not even after doing all that work, it might not have the same depth of flavor that it's allowed to have when it's given that time to like meld together in the jar. So I'm not afraid to use a great quality condiment to like accelerate how much flavor I can add to my uh, to my meal and make something that's very simple to prepare taste like something I've labored over for a long time. In my fridge, I, I always have the basics, of, you know, certain dairy products and cheese and, and you know, milk and things like that. We have eggs, we have the, you know, the other sort of uh, high quality condiments. And then basic uh, hard produce that's not going to go bad quickly, cucumbers, uh, things of that nature. Uh, but, but what I sort of learned along the way early on at the Chew is that the way that chefs shop is very different than the way the average person shops. Now you talk to me, Mama Four, and I think a lot of people watching this this uh, episode will probably agree. The idea of going to the grocery store more than once in a week, <laughs> like like all the kids in town, it just doesn't sound like my cup of tea. It's just a. I love going. Like you have met the person in me that will travel to go to a farmer's market. Like nothing excites me more than getting down and dirty and like meeting the people, growing the food, and like that is so cool to me. But a supermarket with my kids is always insane. So I had it was surprising to me to learn that um, that chefs shop pretty much every day, every other day sometimes. And the reasoning behind it was powerful enough that it has gotten me on this bandwagon. So I now grocery shop at least twice a week. Why? Because you end up buying, you end up having on hand the stable goods that aren't going to go bad for you. But when you grocery shop more regularly, it leads to less food waste because you're buying smaller quantities of the things that you're only planning to make that day or the following day. So you're really, you know, inspired in that moment by what's in season and what's readily available at your at your store. You're reminded that you have it, so you're not like, you know, finding dead herbs at the back of your fridge two weeks later, which is such a bummer. Um, and you and you end up, I find, not falling into the same rut as often of just like making the same dish over and over, which I hear from a lot of families. They're like, I make one thing really well and we eat it all the time. Um, and I think if you're looking to get experimental and you're looking to be inspired by what you you know what you see um, other people making, maybe on social media or you know where wherever, I think that just being in and around the supermarket more frequently really gives me back some of that like ooh. You know, I was going to do this with sweet potato, but maybe I'm going to try something with eggplant today because these eggplants look so good. And I think that's that keeps me 
excited to cook healthy foods for my family. Um, when it comes, you know, to other, just, just, I hear a lot of people ask about picky eaters, and I think this is something people with young children grapple with a lot. Mm -hmm. um, it is the and and this trick, not trick, whatever idea strategy works for adults also. <laughs> Pick the foods they already love. Pick pizza, pick pasta, pick whatever, and find a way to incorporate foods that you want them to enjoy one at a time. Like sometimes people are like, oh, guys, today we're going to be healthy. I'm putting the entire salad on this pizza, you know? And I think it, it's off putting because people want to be eased into it if you're having, if you're struggling, if you're having a hard time. So, Introducing things little by little, repeated exposure really does help uh, you know children and adults accustom themselves to new flavors and new textures and things. Um, one of the other things we do is we always, and this is how I grew up eating, so it, it made sense to me to do this. But I put the I put you know a limited selection of things. Too much choice makes for unhappiness. So, and also a way too busy cook. <laughs> so, uh, so a limited selection of things in the center of the table, and my kids are allowed to portion it out for themselves. And what that does is it gives them. Look, the, the, the selection of what they have to choose from is set. Someone else has determined that. But, um, but what they have to eat from that or what they have to put on their plate, they're allowed to choose. And it just gives them this sense of control that I think does make them that much more excited to participate. Instead of making healthy eating feel like something your parent is telling you you have to do, it makes them feel like, the, cho the choice to eat something good for their bodies is not only an adult choice, it's like a very you know, grown up mature choice to make, but it's also a, a, like an, a, a privilege that they have. It's, it's something, it's a way they can show themselves, uh, you know, some freedom that they have. And I think that has made my kids much more open to trying things that normally speaking, they wouldn't always love. Yeah, no, I'm not, I've never been a picky eater and I'm not a picky eater now, but noted for when I do have children someday. Great tip. Listen, my, <laughs> my kids are picky eaters, and if they could eat pizza seven days a week for breakfast, <laughs> lunch, and dinner, that's what exactly what they're gonna have. It's a it, yep. it's a it's a struggle. So thank you for those tidbits because I was like, man, it, I didn't have a choice growing up. So it it was like you go eat or you not you gonna be starving. So it was it, exactly. You know, it, <laughs> But there's some logic to that too. Like I, my grandma, my grandma has six kids and she's always like, don't make your kids resist you more than the food, which I think is really powerful and, and, and a strong thing to remember. But I like that, that your family was like, this is the food that has been made for our family to enjoy. This is not a restaurant. We're not doing it differently for you because you've chosen that today. You don't like whatever we put on the table. There, there is value in being able to just go with the flow. You are un undoubtedly a great leader and a great friend <laughs> because you know how to compromise and just be like, all right, fine, I'll go with the flow on this one thing. <laughs> like, yes. Love it. So we have members of the military community watching us live right now, as you know. So what would you like to say to America's heroes? I would like to say that we, you know, we, we, oftentimes remember and laud the people wearing the uniforms for their incredible service. But I think it is just such an honor and a privilege to get to address the families who support our heroes because it is a tremendous sacrifice and workload and stress and and also pride. And I am just so honored to get to speak to you today and hopefully share a little bit of my world that I, I truly hope makes your day a little bit more fun or beautiful or delicious or hopefully all three. And thank you, truly thank you so much. Thank you. And Daphne, you are receiving a lot of love on our Facebook feed because, you know, we keep the comments open. Um, and of course, my friend that I mentioned earlier, she's watching from Palm Beach. Um, but I, we also have a couple questions. And I like this one. This is a really good one. Julie asks, what's your best cooking advice for people who don't like to cook? I know it's terrible, but <laughs> it's different for everybody. <laughs> so when you, you know what? Kind of I, I I think it's a great question because I think a lot of people, I'd be, I, you might be surprised to hear how many people will come and watch my cooking on, on TikTok or Instagram or whatever. And they're like, you know, I'm never going to make this dish, but I still like to watch you cook it. You know, I think a lot of people um, enjoy food content and enjoy eating. You know, that is the, that is the gateway to enjoying cooking. If you enjoy eating, you're going to eventually find a dish or two or five or 20 that you actually genuinely enjoy making because, um, I think that we put a lot of stress and pressure on ourselves, sometimes from watching, you know, food content of, of various kinds that feel like food is high pressure and like you got to get in the kitchen and flambe and, you know, broil things. And, and it just feels intense where cooking in, in my world has always felt 
nurturing, nourishing, free, to, like freeing. You know, my, I, I always talk about my kitchen being my kingdom. And I think as adults, it's very rare the, the places where we can afford to be experimental, to be um, novice at something, try something new, learn something new and have the, um, the trial and error process of that have like almost no risk attached other than other than your 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 having to sleep on the couch episode. <laughs> uh, and I I, I, tr I truly think if you can reframe cooking as for you that like yes you are hoping to provide something a wonderful meal for yourself or for your family but but the confidence that you should feel is for you and the freedom that you should feel is for you and the you know you know especially over the last couple of years it's been really hard to travel. It's been really hard to adventure. I love to think of cooking as being a chance to stamp my passport without ever leaving home. I mean, just the range of things you can try. And I do, I really do appreciate how much the world, the, the burgeoning world of, of food content online has made so many different types of cuisines accessible and really broken down like the simplicity of certain preparations. So you can start to sort of dabble and test the waters. And look, if, if what it comes down to is like you buy a rotisserie chicken from the supermarket and then you make a lovely fresh chopped you know, herbs and olive oil, and a little grated garlic and a little lemon juice, and you put that lovely gremolata on top of your broken down rotisserie chicken, like you made that and it looks freaking gorgeous because of what you did. <laughs> and I think yeah, like that little bit helps. I think it does make yeah. it make a difference. But start with things that you love to eat. Uh, undeniably, the best place to start is like learn how to cook something you love to eat. And if that's if you if you have a target that you're so excited by and obsessed about, like you're going to want to cook it. Hey, so for me, Daphne, you have this gift of describing food to make make the average person hangry like instantaneously like i'm like i'm, I'm starving right now just, just hearing you talk about food because you use the right terminology that that, that kind of hits your senses and and I, lo I love food content too so i watch it all the time not to say that i'm a cooker or i i'm i, I like to grill and 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 so i'm outside on the grill a lot more uh but man the way you describe food is like Whew. So it's yeah, it's eleven thirty here. It's lunchtime, so we are going to be fully ready for for lunchtime by the time this thing ends. So we appreciate you. So <laughs> we know so you, you got yeah. So we know you got plenty of hats, uh, including being the newest judge of the Master Chef Junior. So uh, seeing kids cook is just amazing to me. Like I can watch that all day long. So uh, fans can catch this episode, these episodes on uh, Fox and Hulu. So uh, what's it like mentoring like the next generation of chefs? It's incredible. I'll tell you what, you know, joining MasterChef Junior as a judge this season, it is really, I don't think I knew what I was getting into in terms of just the skills of these kids. They are so phenomenally talented. I mean, we're talking eight-year-olds making their own pasta and, and perfectly searing fish and just like doing things that I, my oldest is eight and I have never asked her to do any of these things. So it is definitely <laughs> opening my eyes to the five course meal my children could be cooking for me. Um, but I, I do think that it's what's so exciting about talking to these kids and our, our kid chefs is that, um, you know, when you're trained in something, when it's your profession, there is a degree of rigor and um, an expectation associated with that. So when you're talking to trained chefs, like, for instance, in MasterChef, um, I, I call it MasterChef Senior, but, you know, like the <laughs> MasterChef <laughs> Primary, <laughs> um, you know, there's a, there's a seriousness. Nursing home. <laughs> that's right. That's the, next, that's the next generation. There you go. There you go. Um, but I, I mean, imagine what you could do with all that, all that uh, culinary goodness. Um, but I do, I do think that there's, there's a seriousness and, and therefore sometimes a lack of flexibility to get around those sort of like expectations of cooking where, but the kids, they're coming in just pure passion. They're there to have fun. They're there because they love food and they love to eat it. They love to experiment and play with it. And they do put together some wild combinations, things that like no uh, trained culinary person would ever <laughs> think to put together. And sometimes they really blow your mind and they really work. And I think that just want, you know, being able to nurture these kids on their journey and being able to help uh, help them get better week after week. What I think is really empowering about this show is is you see their progress week to week, their growth week to week, their ability to 
um, to take what may have failed the week before and realize that that doesn't define them, that they are back again for this challenge this week and it's brand new and it's theirs to seize and do with it what they will. I think it's hugely inspiring. Um, and again, I was just blown away by how delicious their food was. I was shocked. Eight-year-olds. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's just too funny. But you've also written a few cookbooks and contribute to the cravings of foodies worldwide on social media and on your website. What other projects do you have on the horizon? So thank you so much for that. It's very kind. I, um, I have a brand new cookbook coming out April 26th. It's called Eat Your Heart Out. It's all fun, no fuss food to celebrate eating clean. And it is, uh, you know, it's shocking for people who've seen me be cooking all, you know, all along on TV and on my social media and everything. This is actually a cookbook devoted to 150 recipes that are free from gluten and free from refined sugar. Um, if you know anything about me, you know I'm not about restriction. I'm not about deprivation. I'm really about savoring and enjoying delicious bites first and foremost. And then health has always been a priority for me, but it's never been an obsession. And I found that for people like me who live for delicious bites and it sounds like i'm in good company here people like us need a reset too you know every once in a while when you feel like your indulging has gotten out of hand or that you need a chance to renew and reset healthy habits um it it, it can't come from a place of rigidity or a place of like all right fine well then just eat this rabbit food because you're just never going to stick with something like that so i could not find a reset plan i knew i would genuinely enjoy living along and and still be enjoying my bites day after day so i wrote this book eat your heart out specifically to tackle a a reset plan that really works for people who love food and it's five days on two days off of this no gluten and no refined sugar premise um, and the two days off are really critical. I often, you know, when I'm doing this reset and I've done it after pregnancies, I've done it after periods of a lot of stress or a lot of celebration, like anytime I need to renew those, that commitment to healthy living and, and feel strong in my skin again. And I think a lot of us do have those aspirations for longevity and beautiful, clear skin and bright glowing eyes and, and weight loss and all the rest. But the lifestyle plans that are um, often put out there feel like another job that none of us need. I don't want my eating to feel like work. I want it to feel like fun. Taking good care of yourself should be as delicious as indulging. And so that is really, you know, these recipes I hope are, are to the taste level that you forget you're eating them to be healthy and are really just eating them to enjoy yourself. Yeah. Love it. We're excited to cop that cookbook for sure. Um, so as a reminder for our viewers, you can visit gooddishtv.com for recipes, cooking tips, videos and information on where to watch the good dish also you can catch daphne on master chef jr on thursdays at 7 p.m central on fox and stream past episodes on hulu daphne before we say goodbye where can viewers go to keep up with all things daphne oz oh please come hang out with me uh like the ladies on here are doing already and, and um at daphne oz i'm on all these different lovely social media channels and i'm daphne oz.com would love to have you Come hang. Awesome, awesome. And for our Chief Chat viewers, this episode will be available on YouTube and Spotify. Uh, you can rewatch with your friends or catch up on past episodes. Uh, also, be sure to join us back here at 12.30 p.m. on Wednesday, March 30th, when we welcome back Mark Wahlberg in a celebration of Chief Chat's second anniversary. So we're hitting our terrible Woo! twos uh, in, wow. in a couple of weeks. Yeah, absolutely. And, and also I join us live at 11 a.m. on Tuesday, April the 5th, when moving with the military host, Maria Reed joins the chat. So, so Daphne, uh, man, it's been a pleasure having you with us today. I want to tell you a quick story because we had your dad on the show. Um, yes. And he talked about he talked about sleeping. He talked about the importance of getting good sleep. So he he kind of threw me a, a couple couple things to do, and he recommended this weighted blanket, right? And so okay. I bought a weighted blanket. However, I think I got the wrong size, right? I think I got, uh, I think I got one that's a little bit too heavy. <laughs> so now I understand the, the power of the weighted blanket because you literally can't even move once that thing is on you. So I'm like, man, this thing is, it's got me suffocating and no wonder I'm getting eight hours of sleep now. So thank you, Dr. Oz. <laughs> You're all tucked in. I am Love all it. tucked in. And I have to roll off the bed to get out. So it's, it's, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad but you're no, getting a good solid night's rest, even if you can't leave your bed. <laughs> that's, that's yeah. 
<laughs> but uh, thank you, Dr. Oz, and thank you, Miss Daphne Oz, for for giving us some tips to to stay healthy and not burn the pepper on our steaks and and all the just yes and all the just goodness that you you provided. Uh, you're doing so much uh, for the world to make a world a better place. So we appreciate you. Uh, and, and we thank you for your time. And so having you with us means a lot to our, our nation's heroes. I'm so grateful to you and thank you for having me on. It was a real privilege and an honor. Thank you. Awesome. So if you don't mind hanging on for our kind of formal goodbyes uh, till after the live and then uh, uh, we'll go. But thank you all and uh, Chief Chat out.